Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm going to make a flipping awesome um, card today using a bug deal from Lawn Fawn. And I've also got the flipping awesome die set and the add on. So I'm using the square, the main image, uh, main die, and a couple of the add ons. I'm also going to use these wavy, stitched wavy, no, not wavy, <laughs> stitched hillside <laughs> borders um, to create some little hillsides. So this is the main, uh, I suppose, mechanism for the the hills, the um, flipping awesome. It's basically like a old school waterfall card, but we're going to turn it sideways. And there's some score marks there. And what I do is I fold one way and then I fold them back on themselves. And that way it moves a bit better. There's also two tabs on the end that you need to fold as well. So basically you will fold the back piece underneath and the two little tabs will hold everything together to form the um, flipping motion <laughs> of the card. And I have a standard card base here with some Stampin' Up! Um, cardstock. And one of the add-ons is this little scallop um, rectangle die. Um, so I've cut that out of some white cardstock and I'm going to use some milled lavender um, distressing just around the edges. Just to highlight it a little bit so it stands off from the rest of the card because there's going to be no... You're not really going to see any of the white from the main mechanism. Um, or not very much anyway. So I wanted this to stand out and sort of blend in sort of thing um, and work with everything else on the card. So just inking the edges. Very easy to do. And once I've done this, I'm going to speed through because this took quite a long time <laughs> to get everything um, done. bit of cleanup. I also stamped all the images before and to save some time on the video um, I've stamped all the images, coloured them in with some Copic alcohol markers and then um, I have uh, die cut them with my scan and cut. So they're all ready to go. I just I thought that would save a bit of time on this video because it's quite a long video so <laughs> bear with me. Um, for the um, the little squares that we've used from the die set. Um, I've cut out four of those and the longer piece that will go on the end. And I'm using some peacock feathers distressing just around the edges just to highlight it. So this blue cardstock is actually from a like a mixed variety pack of card. Um, I think it's Paper Mania cardstock. And so it's got a bit of texture on it, but it's a nice pale blue. And I think this is an easy way to get like that's sort of, in this case, a sky color where you've your base piece that you start with is already the main color, so this pale blue. And then that's the little tab for the, to show people what to do to pull the flipping awesome card. So I've highlighted those with the, with peacock feathers, and then I'm gonna use Mode Lawn, my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorites, um, Distress Ink along the edge of the hillsides. Um, I cut these longer, like I cut, cut lengths of them, um, and you'll see what I'll do. I'll use them so that they kind of flow one into the next, although it's not going to make too much difference, but that was the idea anyway. Um, so one piece into the next, it will flow like the mountains, uh, not the mountains, the hillsides are flowing next to each other. Um, but you're not really going to notice that on the end, in the end, you're not really going to see it that way. So didn't really make any difference but <laughs> I know it's like that. <laughs> so there's the hillside for the longer piece and I've sort of worked out where I want each of these hillsides to go. The green is some Stampin' Up! Uh, Pear Pizzazz cardstock. Just a nice green. I always seem to go back to <laughs> Pear Pizzazz for some reason. It's a nice shade of like a pale green. And then I'm just going to stick each of these hills on, um, onto each of the, the like on the bottom of this, each of the squares. 
So I'm going to start with one, just line it up with the bottom of the card and then trim it off and the longer piece that's left I will stick to the next card, next square. <clears throat> and that way it kind of lines up but like I say once you've got these stuck into your flipping awesome card you're not going to see, you know, on the mechanism you're not going to actually see that they flow like that. <laughs> it just doesn't work out that way but I know they, they're like that so <laughs> it's fine. So in the end I didn't actually have to do it this way but I, you know, it's, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> and then just again doing the same thing on the next two. Lining them up, trimming them off. Now I've got my heels that sort of roll one into the next. And then this base piece I'm going to put flat onto the whole length of this. This piece will go on the you'll see on the longer part of the flipping awesome the part that you actually pull out to create the the sort of flipping of the the squares um, is where that will go so so to start with you've got these little like sections and then you've got a square at the end where the two little like tabs are so what you want to do is put tape in between the score lines you don't want it on the score lines so just in between each of these score lines and then you want to cover the whole of the bottom the bottom square. So in other words three of the squares are going to be only attached on that one strip of adhesive and this, this base one here is going to be completely stuck flat. So to start with I'm just going to burnish the, um, and I'll talk about the tabs in a minute, I'm just burnishing the tape on there and then I'm going to take off all the tape. But you see how it's just on the end square as such and each um, section in between the score lines. So this first one is you decide which way you want to orientate them. I've decided to go horizontal, <laughs> had to think about that. <laughs> um, and this one sticks completely flush. Then each of these next pieces you're going to line up with the score line, which I actually lifted it to, to line it up and it's going to line up top and bottom with the square before. So I'm using that score line as a guide so I'm lifting it so that I can actually see that I'm lining it up okay. So now you've got you're flipping awesome basically. <laughs> so the tabs will hold everything together but that's your the basics of it. So now the tabs will fold behind the base piece but before I do that, that left hand side you're going to fold over and then you're going to open it up like a book. So you fold this piece with this little pull tab, you're going to fold it underneath and then you're going to open the pieces, the little squares we've already put on, you're going to open it up like a book and this is where this piece, this longer piece will go in and it just lines up nicely in there. So I'm going to do it again, so you're going to put that one underneath and then open it like a book. If you do it the other way around it will be on the back of the, <laughs> on the, of the flipping awesome die. So <laughs> just to show you it's now in the right place. So now for the tabs, oh I'm going to put this little, um, it's like a little, little arrow that will just show people what they need to do and which way they need to pull the thing out. So um, there is actually on the add-on set there is a couple of other um, sort of shapes of arrows and things, tabs to pull um, and there's one that actually will work really nicely and, and is a bit old school waterfall card. <laughs> so I'll show you that in another video. So those two tabs are actually going to wrap around both pieces. So you're going to put your tape on this side facing up and when you stick it down it will, that's the only two, two pieces that are actually going to hold everything together. So you're going to get your little scallop or your piece of cardstock, fold it back on itself so that you've got the tabs then wrapped around the whole mechanism and then 
you're lining up on this little scalloped rectangle that's the word and that's the only two places it holds it in place but now you have your flipping awesome <laughs> isn't that cool so now you just need to decorate so before I do that I'm going to take a number 10 set 10 of the uh, one of Tim's Tim Holtz uh, stencils these are the minis so you get three minis in in the set and I'm going to use the fresh fig ink on I believe this is fresh fig cardstock um, it was one of the um, random cards that I have <laughs> that are like pre-folded and ready to go so I thought I'd just grab that color and I thought I'd do color like tone on tone um, if you don't have the same color cardstock as ink then just find something that looks similar and it'll still look really nice it still give you that tone on tone look even if it's not exactly the same color and I thought this sort of flowery floral type of stencil worked really well just to give something in the background and then as I've lifted off I'm going to just fill in the gaps and because it's a stencil you can see kind of through the stencil um, some areas I'm inking lighter than other areas so that it's got some variation and then on the bottom they didn't look like there was much going on because it's just this like stems so I just added some more stems in there so it looked fuller at the bottom so really easy to do and that's the the front of the card and that's just straight onto the card base and then just cleaning my stencil off I like to clean as I go just so that it's done <laughs> Otherwise, knowing me, I'll put my uh, finger into it or something <laughs> and then I'll end up smudging something else. And I didn't do Tim's trick of putting a piece of paper and like a copy paper underneath. Didn't have it near me. <laughs> so before I actually stick this down onto the card, we're going to decorate it. So again, I've got all these pieces from the A Bug Deal um, stamp set and I've stamped them, colored them in with some alcohol markers. I used my Copics and got them cut out with the brother scan and cut it to me that is just yes it's an investment piece but it is so helpful i am forever forever grateful for that machine because it helps me so so much with um cutting things out and it saves me a lot of money on the dies because the dies tend to be the more expensive part of any um, like stamp set like if you've got coordinating dies the other thing I like about the scanning cut is that it will cut other stuff so if I've got stamp sets that don't have coordinating dies anyway like they just never they were never made for them or they like that old that I don't have them because I don't make them anymore um, I can still cut those images out so it's 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 a really good machine I love it and I use it all the time so I'm really chuffed with it so for each little block I'm going to decide where I want each of these little characters um, that pile of where the worm is it's dirt just <laughs> for the record <laughs> um, it's a pile of mud uh, nothing else <laughs> so, uh, my husband thought it was funny that he looked at it at one point and was like mm, <laughs> that could be something else no it's dirt it's mud um, so I just thought I'd say that because it was quite funny actually at the time uh, and what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm figuring out where I want to put things and then I'll go back to other scenes um, you're basically creating like four or five five little scenes um, so you need a lot of images so for my images I actually there were enough bugs in the set that I actually only stamped them twice I literally stamped all the images twice um, and there's enough variety of bugs within this set that I could just stamp them twice and have enough to do this whole thing um, I think the more full little scenes like this look the better um, the other thing to know is that you've got to stick everything flat uh, there's no dimension in you know there's no um, like 3d foam or anything within this each of these scenes if you do add foam it's not gonna 
it's not going to be able to work the mechanism won't work so everything needs to be stuck flat so I chose to use wet adhesive as well because I feel like once it's stuck it flattens quite well um, and also I didn't want to fiddle with tape so because it would just drive me mad I just feel like also wet adhesive will last longer so as long as you've got a decent adhesive it's it's it, you know it, it will stick longer than I think tape tape tends to sometimes if it gets too old it, it will dry out and then it will start to come off um, whereas I think wet adhesive tends to last a bit longer so just looking at my scenes and going right you know trying to figure out what I'm going to do on the next one also the more you play with this the more it will move better um, you can add like I haven't tried this but you could add I suppose like a powder tool you know like the powder tools for heat embossing you could add those as well to um, like around the edges and things like that so that it runs a bit smoother but honestly the more you play with it the more freely it will move so and I love that one of these <laughs> one of the um, ladybugs has got a little potty hat on it so you know that one had to be where the mud cake is the cupcake <laughs> The mud cupcake <laughs> so because it's his birthday of course <laughs> bugs having a party so still arranging little things and i will go back and forth as well so i've put a couple of acrylic blocks on um as i'm going so that i can just hold that adhesive allowing the adhesive to just dry off enough that i can then move on to the next one so I'll go back to other scenes and then try and figure out if it needs another bug or another something. Um, there's leaves in this, there's like I say there's the dirt which I just left with the worms. I thought that made sense for me anyway. <laughs> and then on this last scene, the last square and the longer piece, they're kind of one scene but I do keep them somewhat separate. Um, you could make this into one continuous scene so I could have if I thought about it I could have got my hills to match up much better um, but I didn't think that far <laughs> so, and then the branch um, if you're going to put anything on this end scene make sure that it either is going to fit underneath so as flat as possible or if like with the branch there although I don't do this anyway I take the branch out in a minute but with that branch I tucked it underneath um, like, underneath where the, the last square is so that it doesn't hook on anything so that there's less chance of it stopping it from being able to move. Um, I also used the um, sentiment, I got my sentiment stamped on that last panel which is where I knew I was going to stamp so this took a bit of thought just to work out what I wanted to do, what sentiment I wanted which is also why I turned it horizontally um, and I'm using it in this direction because the sentiment's kind of long so it made sense to use it on this longer <laughs> piece at the end and then I thought these little I don't know what those things are called those little things on the branch there um, I'm sure I've seen them in my garden they're like a they're tiny little things but they've almost like they've got a suit of armor on I don't know what they're called anyway there's a couple of them that are like rolled up <laughs> like they're like they're rolling off so I, I had to have them rolling off the branch I mean why not I don't even know if they live in branches but <laughs> they're rolling off the branch and then again I'm just going to arrange the cupcake the mud cupcake the worm and his dirt <laughs> it is dirt people it's dirt and these little roly polies and also I arranged them so they look like I've turned one more upside down so that it looks like he is rolling um, to give that illusion anyway that he's rolling and then this guy's having a little munch on his leaf but this is where it's quite fun because I've only like I say I've only stamped these, these guys out twice so it's not like I've had to stamp them three or four or five times you know there's enough variety of bugs in the set that's probably what I should have said earlier there's enough variety of bugs in the set that by stamping them twice I've got tons of them to play with on here um, so yeah it's a cool set and I was very impressed with my machine for cutting out these tiny guys you can see how tiny these little things are um, they are very small <laughs> bugs so and I just 
was so impressed with how easily it seemed to cut them out so well impressed and then one little butterfly there and then I think it's the leaf that I add on here I just wanted to use as many of those images in the end I didn't really use too many I didn't use any of the big branches they were just too big for this particular scenery or what I was doing um, they would work fine but I just thought they were too big for what I wanted and then the um, what was the other thing I was gonna say oh and then the little branches I only used the, I they used the two I had and I had an extra speech bubble as well that I decided to leave off so all in all there weren't too many images that I didn't use but sometimes I think you need to stamp and color more than you think you're gonna need um, just so you don't run out halfway through a project so and there are also in the stamp set these teeny tiny <laughs> I mean look at the size of the stamps teeny tiny little little sayings so I decided that I was going to use all three of these they just worked really well um, on each of the speech bubbles so the first one says hi so I thought well that was appropriate for the front of the card first first little scene and then we have yay because you know eating cake hello and then a thanks and I decided that the thanks was quite cute at the end because it's kind of like he's saying thanks for coming to my party <laughs> that's why I don't know why um and then the the sentiment at the end there this is a bug really a bug deal I just thought it was funny <laughs> so so when you put this on your card you need to well for me anyway I think putting some foam adhesive on the back of the whole thing is going to work much better when it comes to actually pulling that and playing with that it just allows your fingers enough space to between the card base and the little tab to pull the you know to make the movement of the flipping awesome um, it just allows for that much better so adding some foam tape to that means it just raises it a little bit so that you can do that so I'm going to show you now how this works and look I was really impressed actually <laughs> and I'm so chuffed with myself um, but you know it's a it's a cute card and it's but like I say this one did take a little while because obviously there's a lot of pieces there was a lot of coloring in there was a lot of um, bits that that you needed but it's not difficult I think that's the biggest thing you need to just well you don't need to do anything but <laughs> enjoy what you do um, so yeah so thanks for coming to my mud party for today <laughs> and I will see you in the next one guys bye